want to go ahead and get your Bible done some reading. <clears throat> but I would be remiss not to talk about my Bible on today. Amen. Uh, me and my brother DeMarcus and my brother Darrell had, uh, and I have a lot of other brothers, Jamal, uh, we had such an example of a man. Uh, I can remember as a kid, he used to, um, he stuck being like the pass down gifts, talents, and, um, and, um, and wisdom. And so I saw my dad, my, grand, my grandfather was like a master carpenter. He could build houses, he could build like my grandmother's house, he could hit the house they lived in. And I never saw that for myself because I mean my grandfather was, when, when he died, I was a little boy. But my dad had in his heart that he would teach his sons how to do the things that my grandfather did. And so though my grandfather may not have had a million dollars to pass down, but he did pass some generational wealth to us because he taught us how to build. So let somebody say build. build. When you're building something, that means you take time, you take skill, it takes um, energy to do so, right? Somebody say build. build. So when you, and you have to take your, uh, put your um, time, so when, even when you start to build the house that we lived at first, uh, uh, 57, 16, Ohio. And we, we was there, and we was kids that lived in there. My dad, we walked in the house, we lived in the house, but my dad kept approving on this place. He said, one day, this is going to be something. I saw my dad build the kitchen. I saw him lay the bricks on the brick wall. I saw him do so many things as a little boy. Not understanding when we got to our new home that we'll have to do some building there too, right? So he started at that house. It was small. And then he bought another house that you go and put two of those houses on the side. And then he taught me and my brother DeMarcus. He said, go downstairs and dream about what you want your room to look like. What kind of man gives little boys the opportunity to dream, right? He a good father, right? And so when me and my brothers, we went downstairs and we laid out our bedrooms and we uh, marked the floor and all that. He probably was laughing like they don't understand a, a lick about what they know what they're doing. However, he allowed us to do so. And then he set us down and took the time to teach us how to uh, be craftsmen and we started to draw the rooms. And the market said, I want my room in the middle and I want to look like this. And, and Darrell's like, I want my room to look like this. I go, Dad, I want a real big closet. And so each of our rooms had our personality in it. He allowed us to do that. Because he wanted to make sure that we understood that we had the ability to dream. And we began to put the walls up and the studs. And we began to measure and we began to drywall and tape and, 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 and paint. And so it was like here, and the rooms were built. He taught us how to build our own little homes within his kingdom. Amen. He wasn't jealous. He didn't. He didn't. He said, like, you, ain't, "You ain't the king of this castle, but you got a room." And then you are such an amazing man. I'm so grateful to call you father because without you, man, we wouldn't know a lot, and you have given us wisdom. Amen. Now you know my daddy loved a song. He loved a little crooner. And so we're going to sing this for him. I heard a thousand stories of what they say you're like. And I heard tender whispers of in the bed of night. And they tell me I'm never alone. You're a good father. That's who you are, that's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am, that's who I am, that's who I am. Perfect. 
whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound again. It says, say it again for me. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Meaning that you may only have an earthly strength, but God's strength is way bigger than we can ever imagine. So in our own body, we have some strength, but he said, whatever you say you can get done, I can get, I can put my God on it. I can put the Jesus step on it. I can send my seal of approval because you need to bind some things. And then say, whatever you loose in earth shall be loose in heaven. Meaning you're going to have supernatural power, supernatural ability, supernatural things can happen, but you got to be in a space for him to be healed. Now, there's some things that I, well, as I reach the research, people were building all types of things. They were building idol gods. They were building all types of things. But every time they built something, it was torn down. But the Christ and the when you build a church, it cannot be destroyed. Do not be destroyed. Through the century of time, the church has been an establishment for the community. What am I saying? The church is so much needed right now. When everything else stops, the church still got to keep going. When everything ceases, the church still has to find a way to minister to the souls of the people. Yes. Say, I'm the church. I'm the church. So you're not a building. Yes. You are a spirit of God that's a captain inside of you. And so it's our responsibility to build. Amen. Build yourself. Yes. Build the people around you. Yes. Don't tear them down. Build them up. As I was studying Matthews and I was looking at how Peter walked with Jesus. And, and Jesus worked miracle after miracle after miracle in front of all the disciples. In my mind, I would have been convinced he was Jesus too. But the other disciples said, they say, you this person. And they said, Peter was like, wait a minute. This man that did the fish did two uh, bread miracles twice. Yes. <laughs> he did it twice. You know, we, we always hear about the two loaves and this man did this twice. He said, these people will not go away from here home. Now I'm going to give them some spiritual food, but I'm going to also feed them in that natural mind. And then Peter also had the ability to say, God, you you walking on water. And can you call me to the deep too? And, and God said, yeah, come on, man. You can come. And Peter said, well, call me. Yes. Call my name. Yes. And Peter called, and Jesus called Peter name. And Peter began to walk on the water. And as Peter looked at Jesus, he never sunk. But when he took his leg off of Jesus, that's when he began to fall. Yes. What am I saying? Keep your eyes on God. So that you can stay in the right path. So that you can trust him. As long as you can see him, you can trust him. Now, how, what am I saying? How can I see something, a, a, a spirit that I can't see? I'm talking about see God in your heart and your mind. You may never see him in the physical realm, but he is still there. You've got to open your heart to see him. Yes. We said open my eyes. We say this, I'll open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes. I want to see you. We, well, we can see with our eyes. Sometimes you may believe, you might get to the point where you can't see a real bit. Sometimes I'm blind. But I can close my eyes. I can still see Jesus because he's standing right there. Yes. He's waiting on us to say, come. He's, he said, come. And all we got to do is hear him. Yes. He's been calling your name. Yes. He's been calling you to your purpose. But will you go? He's been calling us to our purpose. Can you walk on the water? And you believe when uh, Peter began to walk on the water, there was no little calm water. The Bible says it was storming. Yes. The Bible said the waters were troubled, and, and Peter still had the courage to walk on it. What am I saying? That's going to give you some problems in your life, that you're going to have to stand still and trust God and walk in his way. Some things are going to happen to you that's going to rock you and you're going to shake your very being. Yes. But you're going to have to trust the Lord. Yes. He said, I'm going to build my church in you and on you. And then he said, and the gates of hell shall not, will not destroy you. Will not take you down. Will not take you under. If it take you down, God's going to build you right back up. Because yes. he loves you. And that's how we get to study further and further and further. And I said, man, Peter's a bad man. Even unto the death, Peter wanted to trust God so much. He wanted to be his, his, his son. Even when the men were handling Jesus.
Jesus, when Jesus was on that road to the cross, and Peter took his sword up and cut the man there off because he said, I gotta defend you. And Jesus didn't need Peter to defense. All he needed him was to trust him. So what did Peter do? Peter got in his own. He was in a he felt he was doing the right thing, but at the wrong time. God didn't need him to do that. All God needed him to do is trust. What am I saying? Sometimes we can do things in our flesh that will mess us up. Yes. Then God has to come back and do a healing of the thing. Because if the, if the God would have killed Peter at the time, then God had a purpose for him, so he didn't allow him. Yes. So he made him pick that man here and heal him. Right, right there. What am I saying? Break it down just a little bit further. I will. Peter even told, God told Peter, listen, man, I got to, before I, he cut the girl, he said, man, I got to go do some things. This is this inner circle. I said, I got to go do some things. I got to go and die. And Peter said, no, Lord, you can't do that. And Pete, God had to rebuke Peter. And called him, he said it was people, well, he called him the devil. But I really I really believe he meant he was full of the devil. <laughs> what am I saying? Sometimes we can be trying to do the right thing so hard and we will deter the, the uh, people to from doing their purpose. It's not your job to stop. If someone has a dream, it ain't your job to tell them they can't do it. If someone has a direction from God said, God told me to do this. You trust the Lord and say, well, God told you, I'm standing with you. Peter had to learn, not the hard way, but by walking with him. And as Peter walked with God, God was able to establish the church even after he died. When Jesus went up to heaven, it was Peter that, um, that became the foundation of the church. Because Jesus was no longer here. God, he had to understand the, the message of Jesus Christ and trust the Father and the Son, and then he got the Holy Ghost, which gave him power, amen? amen. So Peter was so amazing because he was the sea walker. What do I mean? God has given us the ability to walk through problems of life if we trust him. Amen? amen. And as I close, I began to see why God wanted me to talk about Peter on Father's Day. Because Peter was a man to pattern yourself after. Peter could show us how to trust the Lord and, and, and not lean to our own understanding. And when Peter leaned, he should be the example of what could happen. So what am I saying? Let's trust God like the Peter faith in God. Amen.
Thank you.